Um, first, I wanted to try something. Alexa, are you there? Alexa, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I listen once I hear the wake word. What did Guy say? <laughs> that was a bad joke, but anyway, thank you. I don't speak Hebrew, obviously. So, uh, okay, I wanted to, I know that this is one of the last sessions of the day. Uh, you heard a lot of things, so you got a lot of information, and uh, I'll try to make this uh, as light as possible. I'll try to tell you two things, um, hoping that you will remember one. And the, the two things are, um, I will show you uh, just one single device that I have uh, here for you today. This is uh, uh, an Edison uh, uh, chip on an Arduino expansion board. Here it is. I will try to put it up on a screen for you. Hopefully, you all will be able to see it. So this is. Uh, uh, a device. So this is a small connected device, and I will go. Uh, this is one of the two things I will show you. The other things that I will show you today is uh, how easy it is to connect uh, uh, devices such as these uh, uh, micro uh, computers or micro controllers to AWS. So this is uh, uh, the second thing I want to uh, uh, to show you. And uh, the, the thing that I will hope that you will remember is that how easy this is, and that, that you should definitely try it out. Um, so. Let's, uh, I'll show you a couple of slides, and then we'll go into the meat of the, uh, of the demo. So when we discuss nowadays about Internet of Things, so we're discussing about devices, small uh, connected devices. Usually these are uh, the objectives uh, that, are, uh, that are associated with this, uh, with this topic. What are these devices? So these are fairly simple devices. They're not smart by any means. Their uh, computing power, their memory, very often is, uh, is very close to zero. They have uh, uh, specs similar to VIC-20s uh, of, uh, of uh, a few years ago. So these are really, really not very smart devices. But what is their, what is their advantage? That they're connected to the physical world. So this is their beauty. They are connected to the reality, right? So we're not talking about virtual. Uh, uh, we're not talking about bits uh, and, uh, and electrons, uh, not necessarily only. But these, all of these devices have in common that they're connected to the physical world. They are sensors. They can measure temperature, uh, acceleration, uh, humidity. They can interact with the physical world, with uh, 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 motors, uh, with actuators. They can move uh, through the physical world. And once they do have uh, uh, these uh, properties uh, of interactions, they can actually um, report them through the connections. That one, one example of this connection I will show you today. Uh, they can report, they can be leveraged in, uh, in a context where uh, we can have these devices, as you can see on uh, the left side of the screen, they are producing data. And they're in, in, in this specific context, they're called producers. So all of these devices in, when, in, in production environments, they're uh, assembled in fleet. They do uh, come with, uh, in, in a small package, but they create a lot of data. So, uh, once uh, uh, we start doing things uh, um, at scale, uh, we're going to also to have uh, uh, some challenges that we need to face. Uh, we have a lot of data coming in. We have a lot of consumers that will use this data. So this is basically to set the stage. So these are some of the needs that we need to uh, address. Now, these devices, as I said, they're not particularly smart. They don't have a lot of. Uh, computing power. They don't have a lot of storage. So they need the storage. They need, a, theoretically, unlimited storage, or at least a very large scale of storage and very large computing power. And that's where uh, we come into play. Uh, something that uh, one of the, uh, the cloud solutions uh, that provides unlimited or virtually unlimited storage and all virtually unlimited compute, the logic part, is AWS. And when you have memory and when you have logic, what do you have? You have a brain. You have a head. Now, you can actually connect uh, all of these physical properties that you are seeing, in, in, that you're measuring, that you're feeling uh, through these devices, uh, through these sensors. You connect them, and you can elaborate them. So this is a virtual representation of what we're discussing here. Now, let's get into the specific uh, um, demo. Again, I, uh, I'm going to show you today uh, this uh, uh, small device, and I will have this very high-tech solution of leveraging PhoneBoot, uh, the native video application of the Mac. 
So uh, this is uh, the, the, the least the troublesome solution I found. So this is, uh, um, you see here uh, a lot of things, right? But you have to concentrate uh, on, uh, on just a couple of elements. So what you see here is the actual upside down Edison chip. So this is the Edison chip. So this is where things happen. You don't need to have this large contraption to make things work. This is just what I chose for this specific demo. This is called a breakout board. This is the largest version. We have a lot smaller version. Intel produces a lot smaller version. There are Arduino breakout boards. They're about this thick. So I would say double of this size. Now, we see a few things on this board. But again, a chip is here. And you will see on this microboard on the Arizona, this is a Wi-Fi uh, device that is uh, uh, embedded into uh, the Arizona. And uh, it's quite useful, you, as you will see. Hopefully, this will work. So uh, connection has been a little spotty in, uh, today. Now, you see a couple of other things. Uh, extremely important, these two USB connectors. One is data and power. One is additional power to run, uh, uh, to run things. I have a couple of other pieces here. Um, so uh, this is uh, an expansion board that is going to get assembled on top of the Arduino um, a breakout board. And then I have uh, now the actual, uh, um, the actual uh, uh, listeners, the devices. That's where the magic happens, right? So this is what uh, uh, senses the physical world, as I mentioned before. What did I put here? So this is a temperature sensor. And uh, as uh, some of you, I hope they will start using uh, uh, these devices, you will see if you feel like me about this thing, it's like, a, it's like a pastry shop. It's like you have an enormous amount of sensors. You have, uh, when you go to this sort of uh, hackathons or this uh, IoT's uh, tryouts and, and uh, fun events, you have what they call sensor bars. When I heard that, so you have a tables with a, a ton of sensor of all kind. It really is, if you're into these sort of things, uh, if you feel like me that a hard, micro hardware uh, hobby is, uh, is back cool again, then you will have a lot of fun. Now, the, the, the last piece, a physical piece, uh, uh, that I want to show you is this display here. Now, uh, the display is just a, a little um, a quick feedback uh, to, uh, to actually show what the, the values of temperature are showing. Now, when you start uh, playing with these boards, I would strongly suggest that you power uh, down the board before connecting almost anything. I'm not going to do that right now. It's already connected. but. The fact is that this is just an analog sensor, right? So what I'm showing here is just an analog sensor connected to an analog port, which uh, hopefully should uh, uh, mean that uh, the board is not going to react much. Now, um, so what do we saw right now? So we saw a little bit of theory. Then we saw a physical board, uh, one of the many. There is a Raspberry Pi. There is Arduino Yun. There is uh, other Intel uh, versions. Uh, uh, there is a ton of these things, right? That's the beauty. Various uh, capacity specs uh, and, uh, and, uh, um, and, and, op and, and options for you. But how do, we f uh, how do we put them together? How do we control them? So as I said, this is a very, very simple microcomputer. And uh, um, it's not. It's either on or off, either executes or not executes. A very simple concept. That's one of the things that in the beginning was a little uh, uh, stranger for me. I was trying to pause a program that I had in execution, and I couldn't figure out how. You just don't pause it. This is uh, just a, a, a simpleton, right? It processes or not processes, and you will see this. Now, what I have here um, is uh, uh, an Arduino IDE. So Arduino uh, ID is the, the, what I like uh, just to, uh, and what I picked for this specific demo. Very, very simple way of coding. Uh, now I will open uh, uh, something that I created before. And uh, Arduino programs uh, to manage uh, um, microcontrollers and boards are called sketches. So a sketch is basically made up of three parts. So we have a, 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 a sort of a, a, a header group. Uh, that uh, um, you guys can move closer if you want. There is a lot of room here. And uh, I'm going to have this uh, for, for a little bit. Uh, three parts in every sketch. Uh, the first part, uh, a, a bit of includes. So some of you that might be uh, familiar with uh, C or C++ syntax will recognize this to be somehow familiar. Again, a little bit includes. And then uh, we only have two functions that we have to have there. One is uh, uh, the setup function which is called uh, uh, very, uh, it's fairly recognizable, it's called setup. And uh, uh, then the other one that we do have uh, is the loop. 
So as I said, there is only one type of processing that happens, and it's one, and it happens all the time until you power it down, uh, until you power down the board, or the board actually fails to execute or gets stalled or somehow. Now, uh, usually, uh, I will go over the code while the board uh, starts up. Uh, the board is on. Uh, there is a few green lights that uh, that uh, indicate uh, that uh, the board is functional right now. What I'm doing here. What I just did, uh, I clicked uh, uh, the second button that uploads this code to the board. And of course, I have, a, uh, I have an error. So nice. OK, that's great, actually. This is, uh, uh, this is good because it gives me the possibility of showing you something that I forgot earlier. Arduino IDE, is a, this is a specific version that Intel has created in partnership with Arduino to support the Edison and some of the specific boards. So in the IDE, very simple configurations, they're required. There is a board to set up, which usually is picked up automatically. Sometimes it doesn't, like in this case. And then uh, there is a port that you have to, that you have to set up. In this case, uh, the port uh, could be uh, this one. That would have been, uh, that, that was the guess of the Arduino IDE. It doesn't, li it doesn't seem to be the case, um, or actually it is. So we don't know exactly. Let's try to upload again. We just failed one time, but we'll see. So it, it did uh, upload in this case. Um, somehow there is the same color coding for errors and success. Forget about it. As long as it says at the bottom, transfer complete, your board has been seen, recognized, and the code has been uploaded. Now, best way of, uh, uh, so now we saw piece number two of this setup. We saw the Arduino IDE, how to put code inside the, the board for execution. Now let's go into uh, the, um, the, the, actual, uh, uh, the actual serial output. So this is the best, uh, usually, I, I hope your access point works. Uh, the, this is guy access point, as you may infer from uh, the SSID. Uh, this is uh, the, as, as it's in it, obviously. Um, this is a serial, a serial port, the communication. You will see there is going to be a lot of data here. This is uh, very simple. You do serial print output equivalent on your code, bam, and you, and you write uh, during execution on this, uh, on this specific part uh, of, uh, of the IDE. You will see a couple of pieces up there. I'm connecting to Wi-Fi. As, remember, the board has a Wi-Fi directly on the chip. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a couple of things that are going to be indicated there. Uh, now we're going to, uh, obviously we're experiencing a, a bit of a, a network delay there. Uh, I am going to do in, with this code, let's walk through the code while the board uh, uh, executes the code. What I'm doing with this code is leveraging the AWS Arduino SDK, very simple. Very simple set of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, little uh, snippet of codes that you can include in your library into specific case, that these are C and C++ libraries, that get uh, 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 to uh, provide to board uh, and to coders and to makers and uh, to, to, to you, to everybody that wants to play with these boards, uh, additional functionality. So as I was, uh, you can see here, there is a bunch of them. Uh, in this case, uh, I will go briefly. There is a, uh, these are all calls uh, to the specific SDK, which I do leverage in my .ino, .ino like Arduino, um, main uh, program, which is the, uh, this one. In this specific case, I do, um, I, I create a couple of constants, a couple of variables, then uh, I do set up uh, uh, communication with the board, that this is for the output. I do set up, uh, um, uh, the the specific uh, uh, the specific uh, uh, LCD here that I can't show you any longer. I don't want to open up again uh, the phone booth, but but basically I set up the board. Uh, what I need to do, uh, what uh, variables or what constant I want to pass uh, to the SDK to access the various services. In this case, uh, I'm uh, starting up with DynamoDB just to do. I, I did a quick hack uh, to get back a timestamp uh, to then populate, uh, starting to populate into a Kinesis stream. So I created a stream that has one single shard stream, very simple, that I will show you before running out of time. And uh, I will, uh, I'm populating, I'm putting uh, uh, data into this stream. Now, the way that I do this, uh, very simple again, uh, just loop, code executes uh, until uh, the board uh, um, does not function properly any longer or gets, uh, uh, or gets uh, turned off. Uh, so here is all uh, it matters. So this is the line of code that actually makes uh, posting to AWS a breeze. 
uh, we have a value, the temperature in this case that is being read. Let me show you from uh, uh, from the uh, the serial uh, port. Uh, no, great, it's not communicating that yet. So this may be just a case of when uh, the board. Uh, has uh, decided not to cooperate any longer. But the point is that uh, um, we do have a one line of code that passes into uh, Kinesis these values. As I suspected that this with this network connect, uh, connection might have happened, I, I happen to have a, a possibility of showing you uh, the Kinesis uh, stream that I created before. So this is uh, the Kinesis that uh, uh, I created through a cloud formation template. Cloud formation you might, he might have or might not have, have heard today is a manner of creating infrastructure via code. So we create a template and we give instruction to the, to the infrastructure to create a specific stack. That's what I did. One of these pieces that was created was this Amazon Kinesis uh, stream that has seen some uh, uh, requests. Uh, what, is a, what is a stream, for those of you that might not have heard before, or there still are, have, have uh, uh, questions, a, a stream, a Kinesis stream is simply a, a, a big listener that for 24 hours only keeps data that it gets in larger quantities. So very scalable, high level, uh, high uh, volume quantities, and uh, it makes it available inside the AWS infrastructure for consumption, for, to do other things. In my setup, uh, that I have a Lambda function that uh, uh, picks up this, uh, uh, this data uh, within the stream. The Kinesis stream uh, uh, makes uh, uh, the Lambda where, actually Lambda uh, checks uh, there is a function that does both, uh, in this case is a pool function, that does a certain amount of, uh, of data collection. And then uh, uh, the Lambda function simply posts this data to, uh, to um, uh, DynamoDB table. Uh, very simple. In this case, we see a record. Uh, the record has the device ID, MAXAM uh, is, is my, one of my nicknames. And uh, uh, there is a timestamp. There is a device that is uh, uh, producing this data. And uh, uh, there are sensors uh, value in this case, 26.89 and, and the rest. Uh, this is an actual temperature that uh, uh, we're still going to not see. So in this case, uh, I want to show you what actually the display is showing, which means that the board has ceased to operate. So there is also a misspelling and a half a word there. So the board in this specific case has decided not to cooperate. But I hope that I showed you something that is relevant. Again, two things I showed you, a board basically and how to interact to integrate it with AWS. Remember only one, these things are easy. These things are fun, and you can do an enormous amount of things. So uh, here, I want to, my parting shot to you is a, a very simple list of the four useful links. You can start from here, and somehow there must, there, maybe there is a way of putting these links out there, but uh, useful links, I'll, I'll post them t also on, uh, on my Twitter account. Uh, this is all you need, really. I mean, you can start from one of them and, and b then build. Some of these boards uh, run uh, in the $15, $20 uh, on, uh, on Amazon.com, uh, and, uh, <laughs> sorry, those. But we can do, I guess, that, right? So, um, but jokes apart, this is easy. So you take these boards, you start producing data, and you can do whatever you want with it. You can wear them, you can put them on a battery, you can put them on a sleeve, uh, hint, hint, if somebody is, is, uh, is uh, interested. And uh, you can do a lot of things. This is easy, and connecting this data into AWS is even easier. Thank you very much for everybody. If you have questions, I'll be available.